This is the ScholarLink News for 18th December 2020. Almost 4 million US dollars in illicit funds linked to a group that provided encrypted telecommunication devices and network services has been seized. The devices and services were used by transnational organized crime syndicates. The Singapore Police Force's Commercial Affairs Department and U.S. authorities seized the amount from four bank accounts in Singapore. The funds belonged to Phantom Secure and has been repatriated to the United States. The chief executive of Phantom Secure and four of his associates were accused of facilitating the import and distribution of narcotics. This was done through the sale and service of encrypted telecommunication devices and services to drug traffickers. Phantom Secure had advertised its phones as being impervious to decryption, wiretapping, or legal records requests. It also guaranteed the destruction of evidence contained in the devices if it was acquired by law enforcement. In 2018, the chief executive of Phantom Secure pleaded guilty to leading a criminal enterprise. Think about it. How was a criminal organization able to open bank accounts in Singapore? The Disease Control Department in Thailand has announced that all provinces are COVID safe and that people can enjoy the New Year celebrations as local infections at a Bangkok hospital and imported cases from Tachilik in Myanmar are under control. The Director General further confirmed that there are no outbreaks in Thailand and celebrations can go ahead as long as preventive measures are observed. Event organizers have been advised to screen visitors' health, disinfect surfaces, ensure social distancing, ensure visitors wear face masks, and use the contact tracing app. The National Police's Densus 88 Anti-Terror Squad has arrested a fugitive in connection to the first Bali bombing. Zulkarnain has been on the run for 18 years. On October 12, 2002, three bombs were exploded in Kuta, Bali, killing 202 people and injuring another 209. The dead included 164 foreigners from 24 countries. Zulkarnain was a senior member of a terrorist group and the leader of its paramilitary force. He was also a terrorist trainer in Afghanistan and the mastermind of a number of terrorist attacks and bombings in Indonesia. Densus 88 was created after the Bali bombings to quash terrorist groups in the country. Think about it. What do you think are the terrorists' motivations behind indiscriminate killings, such as their bombings. New polls showed that a majority of Japanese oppose holding the Tokyo Olympics in 2021. They feel that the event should either be further delayed or cancelled completely. It appears that public sentiment has not changed much since earlier in the summer, even though vaccines for COVID-19 are now available. Olympic organizers and Japanese officials have stated that there will be no further delays to the Olympics, which are the first in history to be postponed during peacetime. The start of vaccination campaigns has increased the confidence of the organizers, even though vaccination will not be compulsory for athletes or spectators. The delays and health measures to counter the coronavirus are estimated to add another 2.4 billion US dollars to the existing 13 billion US dollar budget for the Olympics. Think about it. Why is Japan not requiring that athletes and spectators undergo vaccination now that the vaccine is starting to be available in countries? Why do you think most Japanese are not supportive of hosting the Olympic Games? China plans to include computer coding as part of the curricula 
for primary and middle school students. The Ministry of Education has also issued guidelines to promote and regulate coding education. This will help them learn about information technology and develop digital and innovation skills. Universities which train teachers have also started majors in IT education to cultivate teachers who can teach coding. Some provinces even include information technology as an optional subject in the National College Entrance Examination. The aim behind teaching coding to students is not to encourage them to become programmers, but to cultivate their logical and problem-solving abilities. Chinese parents who want to prepare their children to have tech-related skills are signing them up for after-school coding classes. One such school, founded in 2015, has taught programming courses to more than 10 million students between the ages of 4 and 16. Think about it. Do you think coding will become an indispensable skill in the future? Or do you think there are other subjects that China should make compulsory instead? McKinsey Scott, the world's 18th richest person and ex-wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, has donated more than 4 billion US dollars in four months. She wrote in a blog post about how the pandemic has affected women and those living in poverty more seriously, while the wealth of billionaires has increased. Scott's advisors focused on 384 groups to be recipients of her donations, down from an initial list of 6,500 organizations. Scott listed the names of the groups that received donations so as to call attention to organizers and leaders that were driving change in their communities. Scott's ex-husband, who is the richest person in the world, has also been active in philanthropy. This year, he committed 10 billion US dollars to issues related to climate change and has also given away 100 million US dollars to organizations that deal with family homelessness. Think about it. If you had the money, what are some of the causes that you would support with your donations and why did you choose them? This brings us to the end of today's edition of the ScholarLink News. Please subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our new videos. As always, this is the ScholarLink team saying goodbye and wishing you a wonderful rest of the day.